Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to do a short review on writing chemicals formulas. Today's essential question, how are formulas written for ionic and covalent compounds? Please make sure you fully answer the essential question as part of your summary. Also, for today's lecture, please have your periodic table handy. All right, let's say you were given the name of a compound, magnesium fluoride, and you need to write the formula. So the first thing you need to do is ask yourself a question. The question being, is this compound ionic or covalent? We need to know the answer to that question because the rules for writing formula are different for ionic versus covalent compounds. So the first thing we should do is find both magnesium and fluorine on the periodic table. So magnesium is here and fluorine is here. And if you remember, we look at this jaggedy line and everything to the left of the jaggedy line is a metal and everything to the right of the jaggedy line is a nonmetal. And as we can see, Magnesium is a metal, fluorine is a nonmetal, which means that's the definition of an ionic bond. So to answer our question, ionic or covalent, the right answer is ionic. Why? Because it is a metal and a nonmetal. So because the bond is ionic, we have to form ions, or we have to figure out the charges. And remember, um, atoms form ions to become like noble gases. So the first thing we'll do is we'll figure out the electron configuration for magnesium, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. And all noble gases end in something S2, something P6, or it could be 1S2. Okay, so what is the easiest way for magnesium to become like a noble gas? We could either make him 3 add a 3P6, so he's 3S2, 3P6, which would be adding six electrons, or an easier way is to get rid of, I'll do that, is to get rid of the 3s2, leaving him with 2s2, 2p6. So he's going to be mg, and we messed with two electrons. We got rid of them, which means we had extra protons, so he's going to be mg2+. Okay, and make a little room here, and let's figure out fluorine. Fluorine, his electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. So we have two options here. We could add one more electron to make him 2s2, 2p6, or we could get rid of 2s2, 2p5. Um, easier just to add one electron. So he is going to be fluorine. We messed with one electron. We added one, which means he has an extra negative charge. So he's going to be F1 minus. So now we got to put these two together. So we have Mg. 2 plus with F1 minus. Remember, they need to be neutral, so we have to have the same number of positive and negative charges. So we'll add another F. So now our charges are neutral, and the formula is MgF2. So, MgF2, let's write that again. What you need to remember, and if you haven't written this down, you might want to now. For an ionic bond, you're going to have a metal and a nonmetal. It could also be a metal and a polyatomic. So when you have an ionic bond, it'll be metal, nonmetal, or a polyatomic, you have to check charges
Another way to write that is you need to make ions. And then the last thing you need to do is neutralize. Or cross out the charges. Alright, let's try one more. What if we have dinitrogen tetroxide? Um, again, we need to ask our question, ionic or covalent. So we see we have di, which if you look at the back of your periodic table, you'll find prefixes. Di means two, tetra means four. So we have di, which means two nitrogens, and tetra, which means four oxides. But let's look here. We have nitrogen and oxide. So let's try to locate those on the periodic table. We have nitrogen and we have oxygen. They're both nonmetals, so they're not ionic. This time, they're covalent because we have a nonmetal. and a nonmetal. Okay, that makes it covalent. The nice thing about covalent is you don't actually even need to check charges. All you have to do is look at the prefix, so di and tetra, and it tells you how many of each. So we have a nitrogen, and we have two of them. We have oxygen, and we have four of them. That's really all there is to naming and formula writing. Just remember, always ask the question, ionic or covalent? And one more time, if it's ionic, it's going to be a metal and a nonmetal. You could also have polyatomics. Okay, covalent's going to be two nonmetals. Okay. If it's ionic, you need to check charges and you need to neutralize charges. If it's covalent, you don't have to check charges or anything, just um, use prefixes to determine to determine amount. Okay, there you go. Um, this is just a real quick review. In theory, you guys already know how to do this, um, so have a good one, and that's it for today.